welcome to the Edifice of Trust podcast. The Edifice of Trust podcast is a thoughtful discussion of today's current events from the perspective of America's founding principles. Welcome. From heart-pumping music to head-thumping commentary. I am currently reading Thomas Sowell's book, The Quest for Cosmic Justice. In essence, Dr. Sowell asserts that constitutional rights, also known as liberties, and cosmic justice, sort of what we know of as social justice but on an even grander scale, are mutually exclusive and, like matter and antimatter, cannot coexist. That is because an increase in constitutional rights can only occur as a result of a reduction in government power, while an increase in social justice, also known as positive rights or entitlements, requires an increase in government power, which ipso facto means a reduction in constitutional rights. Although I'm still reading the book, and will discuss it in detail in a later commentary, it has led me into an interesting speculation about social justice. Imagine that we applied social justice principles to the NBA. The NBA is one of the ultimate meritocratic organizations in the country, but the players do not look like America, as is the professed desire of most social justice warriors who demand that the employees in any profession or organization represent the different identities that make up what we call America. Blacks make up 12.6% of the U.S. population, but make up 74.4% of the NBA. To make the NBA look more like America, you would have to limit the number of blacks and increase the number of white men and Asians. But I am afraid that would not be sufficient to meet our new social justice standards. Those big identities are too broad to be effective. We must make sure that all identities are included. Although the San Antonio Spurs have done a good job of making sure that Hispanics, Frenchmen, and Eastern Europeans are represented, other teams need to do more. And Asian men in the NBA only make up 0.2% of the players, but Asians are now 5% of the U.S. population. Not only do we need to make sure that we have more Asian men, we must also make sure that Vietnamese men, Chinese men, Japanese men, and other Asians are proportionately represented. Unfortunately, this still does not do the job. The black men in the NBA are all very tall, as are the few white men and Asian men in the NBA. Only a bit more than 1% of the men in the United States are over 6 foot 3 inches tall, but most of the NBA players are considerably taller than that. We need to make accommodation for short men and while we're at it, we need to make accommodation for fat men as well. But wait a minute, about half of the people in America are women, and we haven't started to include them on our social justice NBA teams. It is true that women have their own league, the WNBA, but we got rid of separate but equal a long time ago, and besides, the pay in the WNBA sucks. So, in order to right the wrongs suffered by women, they need to be included in the NBA as well. I hate to say it, but we have run into another problem in our quest for social justice. Does a transgender woman count on the male quota or the female quota? Besides, I get confused. Is a transgender woman a person who is a genetic male at birth but believes herself to be a woman, or is it the other way around? And would the other women be upset at transgenders eating up their quota? How illiberal of them. Which brings us to another question. How do we account for intersectionality? Many Americans are made up of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. President Obama was known as the first black president, but he was only half black. His mother was white. So if he was to play social justice basketball, would he be counted as black or would he count against both quotas? A short, fat Asian man would be a three-banger for intersectionality. To solve this problem, 
each player in the Social Justice NBA would have to take a DNA test in order to determine his genetic background, which might include many countries and ethnicities. And black Americans would have to be tested as well, because we would not want a particular tribe such as the Tutsi, known for being very tall, to be overrepresented. That was certainly the case for our bank in Nigeria. The process of Nigerianization, replacing foreign workers with Nigerian citizens, required that every tribe in the country be properly represented. The refs would be in charge of making sure that every player had his or her genetic test and would determine the intersectional boxes that applied. This will be essential to determining the exact percentage of each group so that when it is all added up, it all comes out right. Rosters may have to be expanded as well to accommodate all the possible identities. Okay, we have almost completed our roster of players. All we have to do is throw in a couple of identities such as homosexuals and lesbians, people with physical disabilities, and anybody else who raises their hand and claims to have been subjected to discrimination. Okay, now we are ready to play a game. Of course, we not only need to make sure that the rosters look like America, the play on the court must also look like America. The refs will be in charge of allocating game time among all the identities on the teams. And since each person will have equal time on the basketball court, everyone will be paid the same. Ah, the joys of social justice basketball. Only a couple of problems remain. If one of our teams was beating their opponents too badly, the refs would be empowered to give extra points to the losing team so that they would not fall prey to low self-esteem. The only thing left would be to force the general population to buy tickets to the game so that the players would feel inspired by the crowds that came out to watch truly bad basketball. And if you think that social justice is bad for basketball, just think what it'll do to the economy. Ponder that while you stay tuned for a brief announcement. Whew! We made it. We survived the second year of the presidency of Donald J. Trump. And I wrote a book about it. 2018 Surviving Trump documents many of the trials and tribulations that we faced during 2018 and analyzes their importance from the perspective of America's founding principles. Available on the internet at Amazon and Barnes & Noble as well as other retailers. Links to 2018 Surviving Trump and my other books are available on my website www.edificeoftrust.com Welcome back. Of course, America is not the NBA. American citizens come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors, and many have suffered discrimination in the past. Although some say that many Americans still suffer from racism, I believe that the country has made a lot of progress, both legally and culturally. But as our progressive Democratic presidential candidates remind us, there is still a lot of work to do. But mandating outcomes, like in social justice basketball, is not the solution. We need to focus on the inputs and the rules of the game in order to give everyone an equal opportunity to succeed. Thank you. Thanks for listening to my podcast. If you would like to hear more Edifice of Trust podcasts, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.